What's up, YouTube? So this is going to be our very first ever species special, and we're going to talk about the Jardini arowana. Um, this right here is my Jardini arowana. His name is Copper, and I named him Copper because he has a brownish, silvery sheen to him when I first got him. Right now, he has turned into a darker color, and I actually like that a lot more. Um, this species from Australia, and the scientific name is Scleropagus jardini, but they are called different names. Um, the different names include uh, Jardini arowana, Pearl arowana, Golden Pearl arowana, or Gulf Saratoga. It's the same species of fish. Um, there is actually two different species of arowana coming from Australia, and they are the Jardini and the Lake Carty arowana. Uh, the scientific name of the Lake Carty arowana is uh, Scleropagus Lake Carty. Although they come from the same place, there's actually quite some difference between the two species. First of all, if you're going to look at the fins of the Giardini right here, if you're going to look at that, they tend to have spots. And those spots will stay for the fish, stay with the fish as they get older, although some becomes really dull um, most of the time it will stay or it will become just a dark brown color the fins of the Lecarty however tend to be more yellowish in color with a darker edge another difference with the scales of the fish if you're going to look closer again at the scale of uh, copper right here also include the gills if you're gonna look, um, you will see spots, and those are called the pearling of the scales. They can either be orange, red, or pink. It depends on the giardini, and it also depends on the food and the genes that they get. So, um, <clears throat> the Lecardi, on the other hand, have more of a yellowish silver tone to them. Um, which actually looks really clean there's a hint of pink on the fish but not as much pearling as the giardini another main difference is the shape of the snout the giardinis have more upward pointing snout while the lecardi have a more rounded snout also the giardini tend to have a deep, deeper body while the a Lecardi have a more slender body. With that out of the way, let's focus on the Giardini. They are considered to be the most aggressive kinds of arowana in the hobby. Uh, even more aggressive than the Asians. Um, but then again, it also depends on the individual fish. Their mouth is lined with small sharp teeth and they have what is called a bony tongue. Like other arowanas, they have barbells which help them detect water movements um, from the water surface. And that can be a prey or some sort of food that has fallen into the water. Also, the direction of the mouth. The direction of the mouth suggests that they are top feeders. So the mouth is pointing upwards, therefore, it's easier for them to get food from the top. But, um, what's really cool about this fish is actually the way their head move. For example, like if I drop a food and it falls into the substrate, he will actively move his head downward and look for the food. And if they will check if there's food in there and then they eventually swim toward it in a vertical position, 
and that's how they'll get their food from the bottom they are mostly active swimmers and they occupy the top strata of the water um, this makes them fun to watch in the aquarium because they keep on swimming <laughs> like Nemo <laughs> but uh, um, the fishes uh, since they are aggressive fishes um, it is recommended that you do a lot of research before you look for a tank mate for this guy because they are aggressive and the fishes have to be either too big for him to eat or too small for him to be satisfied with if he ever eats them um, this is where the optimal foraging model comes into play but I will talk about that in a different video also armor tank mates are welcome um, since the Giardini won't hesitate to take a bite out of the other fishes armored fishes have a, a way of defending themselves um, these fishes actually comes in different variety of color there's actually a dark brown which is the color of my first ever Giardini I named Raja if you look at my previous video and also on my logo you will see Raja um, he eventually passed away because of um, a mistake I made on a water change um, then there are the silver ones which copper used to be like um, then there are the more brownish green color and then there are the extremes uh, the extremes include the more golden tones the more golden uh, ones there's also black giardinis which are really hard to come by and I bet are really expensive and also the platinum giardini um, there's also a variety of in their pattern that is called batik batik is very beautiful because it's basically the presence of, of an overwhelming amount of pearls and the scales of the fish I find that very attractive um, the minimum tank size for this fish is actually 180 gallon and copper right now is in 180 gallon and he will be the biggest fish here I, I will eventually put uh, tank meat here but right now I'm just establishing the tank and um, I mean the tank is cycled but just establishing the plants um, I will be putting smaller fishes for example like Romino's Tetras or Corridorus uh, I'm hoping it will work because I've seen it work on other Giardini before I've seen Giardini with um, rainbow fish Corridorus so um, I'm hoping it will work as long as I keep him fed really well then it should work um, uh, 180 gallon is ideal because these fishes tend to grow 24 inches in the aquarium setting and that's gonna be enough space for him to turn around but a bigger tank is recommended um, they actually grow bigger in the wild some people put them in pond with heater and filter and since this fish comes came from Australia which tends to be really hot um, the temperature of the water should be around 78 to 6, 76 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit with a pH of 6.0 to 7.0 which is considered to be low to neutral um, with that being said driftwood right here and dried leaves there at the back they are a welcome addition to this tank um, because they tend to lower the pH the tannins from the wood and the leaves tend to lower the pH and that tends to imitate their natural environment um, since they are carnivorous a meaty variety of 
food will be best for the fish um, I personally feed mine tilapia filet market prawn those are his favorite oh not to mention the blood worms he still goes crazy over the blood worms and freeze-dried mealworms too um, and also silver sides I'm trying I'm going to try to get some freeze-dried crickets and see how he'll like that um, right now I'm avoiding to giving him live food actually like I'm I'm really avoiding that um, I don't think I'll ever gonna give him live food just because I don't think I don't there's like two main reasons why I don't want to do that um, the first reason is that I don't want to see any death in my tank like a mealworm drowning then being spit out <laughs> eventually swallowed or minnows being chomped into pieces you know just looking to their eyes it's just not fun <laughs> another reason is that I try to avoid introducing diseases into the tank feeders tend to carry internal parasites and diseases with them and then the and then they have very little nutritional value so it's not really worth it uh, in my opinion every now and then I would give him beef heart and that is not recommended to be fed regularly because of its relatively high fat content but sometimes I would just give that to him as a treat the best food for them I believe is some pellets because um, it's more concentrated but like uh, the natural ones are good are a good um, substitute as well <clears throat> um, if you're planning to keep this fish be sure to have a secure lid uh, it can be secured by putting weight on top of it because these fishes are really smart and they are very strong and they are really known for being good jumpers they're actually called um, river monkeys um, arowanas in general because they tend to get their food from top of the water which I think is really cool but in an aquarium setting you don't want that because you don't want to come home to a dried up fish and I remember how powerful this fish is because when I was moving him from the smaller tank it was very hard because he fights really well <laughs> after the move we're actually both really uh, tired um, it will do well in a planted tank um, like what I have right now um, this fish will produce a lot of uh, waste so putting it in a planted tank will reduce the production of nitrate or at least something will take in the nitrate and therefore like hurt will not hurt the fish although some Aquaries will put them in a bare bottom tank and this is also nice because it's easier to clean the tank that way when these fishes are small they tend to be very scared at times but, but as soon as they get bigger then they'll they'll get over it and they'll be more confident and like having a bigger tank as well will give them more ways to escape therefore they don't feel so trapped and therefore giving them more confidence um, overall this fish is really fun to keep um, just be sure to be a responsible fish owner and give him everything that he needs including effort in changing their water because they poop a lot a right size tank a variety of food and also the right tank meats and you'll be rewarded with a fish that is truly amazing in the long run so if you like this video just hit that subscribe button or press like and if you like and, and if you think that I missed something or I mistakenly put anything wrong in this video 
feel free to call call it out and put it in the comment section but please respect will be greatly appreciated okay so this is me and copper just saying fish out say bye copper